Uncle Martius, since it is my father's mind that I repair to Rome, I am content. And ours with thine befall what fortune will. Good uncle, take you this barbarous moor, this ravenous tiger, this accursed devil, let him receive no sustenance, fetter him till he be brought unto the empress's face for testimony of her foul proceedings and see the ambush of our friends be strong. I fear the emperor means no good to us. Some devil whisper curses in mine ear and prompt me that my tongue may utter forth the venomous malice of my swelling heart. Away, inhuman dog, unhallowed slave! Sirs, help our uncle to convey him in. The trumpets show the emperor is at hand. What? Hath the firmament more sons than one? What boots it thee to call thyself a son? Rome's emperor and nephew, break the parley. These quarrels must be quietly debated. The feast is ready, which the careful Titus hath ordained to an honourable end. For peace, for love, for league, and good to Rome, Please you, therefore, draw nigh and take your place. Marcus, we will. Welcome, my gracious lord. Welcome, dread queen. Welcome, ye warlike goths. Welcome, Lucius. And welcome all, although to cheer be poor. To fulfill your stomachs, please you eat of it. Why art thou thus attired, Andronicus? Because I would be sure to have all well, to entertain your highness and your empress. We are beholding to you, good Andronicus. And if your highness knew my heart, you were. My lord the emperor, resolve me this. Was it well done of rash Virginius to slay his daughter with his own right hand because she was enforced, stained, and deflowered? It was, Andronicus. Your reason, mighty lord? Because the girl should not survive her shame, and by her presence renew his sorrows. A reason mighty, strong, and effectual. A pattern, precedent, and lively warrant. For me, most wretched to perform the like. I Virginia, and I shame with thee. What hast thou done, unnatural and unkind? Her for whom my tears have made me blind. I am as woeful as Virginius was, and, to have, and have a thousand times more than he to do this outrage. And now, I have done. Was she ravished? Tell, who did the deed? The you eat will please your highness feed. Why hast thou slain thine only daughter thus? I, twas Chiron and Demetrius, they ravished her and cut away her tongue. And they, twas they, that did her all this wrong. Fetch them hither to us presently. There they are both baked in that pie, whereof their mother daintily hath fed, eating the flesh that she herself hath bred. Tis true, tis true, witness my knife's sharp point. Die, frantic wretch, for this accursed deed. Can the sons I behold his father bleed? There's meat for me. Death is a deadly deed! Uh, uh, uh. You sad-faced men, people and sons of Rome, by uproar severed like a flight of fowls scattered by winds and high tempestuous gusts, oh, let me teach you how to knit again this scattered corn into one mutual sheaf. These broken limbs again into one body, lest Rome herself be bane unto herself, and she who mighty kingdoms curtsy to, like a forlorn and desperate castaway, do shameful execution on herself. But if my frosty signs and chaps of age, grave witnesses of true experience, cannot induce you to attend my words, speak, Rome's dear friend. As erst our ancestor, when, with his solemn tongue, he did discourse to lovesick Dido's sad, attending ear, the story of that baleful burning night, 
when subtle Greeks surprised King Priam's Troy. Tell us what Sinon hath bewitched our ears, or who hath brought the fatal engine in that gives our Troy, our Rome, the civil wound. My heart is not compact of flint nor steel, nor can I utter all our bitter grief. But floods of tears will drown my oratory and break my utterance even in the time when it should move you to attend me most, lending your kind commiseration. Here is a captain. Let him tell the tale. Your hearts will throb and weep to hear him speak. Then, noble auditory, be it known to you that the cursed Chiron and Demetrius were they that murdered our emperor's brother. And they, it were, that ravished our sister. For their fell faults, our brothers were beheaded, our father's tears despised and basely cozen. Of that true hand that fought Rome's quarrel out and sent her enemies down to the grave. Lastly, myself kindly banished. The gates shut on me and turned weeping out. I had to beg relief among Rome's enemies, who drowned their enmity in my true tears and oped their arms to embrace me as a friend. I am the turned forth, be it known to you, that have preserved her welfare in my blood. And from her bosom they took the enemy's point, sheathing the steel in my adventurous body. Alas, you know, I am no vaunter. My, I, my scars, can witness, dumb although they are, that my report is just and full of truth. But soft. Methinks I do digress too much, citing my worthless praise. Oh, pardon me, when, for when no friends are by, men praise themselves. Now it is my turn to speak. Behold this child. Of this was Tamara delivered, the issue of an irreligious moor, chief architect and plotter of these woes. The villain is alive in Titus's house. And as he is to witness, this is true. Now judge what cause had Titus to revenge. These wrongs unspeakable, past patience, and more than any living man could bear. Now you have heard the truth. What say you Romans? Have we done aught amiss? Show us where within, and from the place where you behold us now, the poor remainder of Androgenici, we'll hand in hand, all headlong cast us down on the ragged stones, beat forth our brains, and we'll make a mutual closure of our house. Speak, Romans, speak. And if you say we shall, lo, hand in hand, Lucius and I will fall. Come, come, thou reverend men of Rome, and bring our emperor gently in thy hand. Lucius, our emperor, for well I know the common voice do cry, it shall be so. Lucius, all hail, Rome, your emperor! Go, go into old Titus's sorrowful house, and hither hail that misbelieving moor to be adjudged some direful slaughtering death as punishment for his most wicked life. Lucius, Lucius hail, hail, hail Rome's gracious, gracious governor. governor! Thanks, gentle Romans. May I govern so to heal Rome's harms and wipe away her woe. But gentle people, give me aim a while, for nature puts me to a heavy task. Stand all aloof, but, uncle, draw you near, to shed obsequious tears upon this trunk. Oh, take this warm kiss on thy pale, cold lips. These sorrowful drops upon thy blood-stained face, the last true duties of thy noble son. Dear for dear, and loving kiss for kiss, thy brother Marcus tenders on thy lips. Oh, were the sum of these that yet I should pay, countless and infinite, yet I would pay them. Come hither, boy. Come, 
Come and learn of us to melt in showers. Thy grandsire loved thee well. Many a time he danced thee on his knee, sung thee asleep, his loving breast thy pillow. Many a matter hath he told to thee, meet in agreeing with thine infancy. In that respect then, like a loving child, shed yet some small drops from thy tender spring, because kind nature doth require it so. Friends should associate friends in grief and woe. Bid him farewell. Commit him to the grave. Do him that kindness and take leave of him. Oh, grandsire, grandsire, even with all my heart, would I were dead, so you did live again. Oh, Lord, I cannot speak to him for weeping. My tears will choke me if I open my mouth. You sad and drawn, Chini, have done with woes. Give sentence of this execrable wretch that hath been breeder of these dire events. Set him breast deep in earth and famish him. There, let him stand and rave and cry for food. If anyone relieves or pities him for the offense, he dies. This is our doom. Some stay to see him fastened in the earth. <gasps> oh, why should wrath be mute and fury dumb? I am no baby. I thought with base prayers I should repent the evils I have done. 10,000 worse than ever, yet I did what I perform if I might have my will. If one good deed in all my life I did, I do repent it from my very soul. <laughs> Some loving friend. Convey the emperor hence and give him burial in his father's grave. My father in Lavinia will forthwith be closed in our household's monument. As for that ravenous tiger, Tamara, no funeral rite, no man in mourning weed, no mournful bell to ring her burial, but throw her forth to beasts and birds to pray. Her life was beastly and devoid of pity and being dead. Let birds on her take pity. <laughs> <laughs>